Welcome back. My name is Darren Thomas and I am the Director of Educational Research Techniques. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at random forest regression with Python. So let's go ahead and see what we can learn. So when you're dealing with random forests, basically you're dealing with decision trees. But what's happened is that you're making multiple decision trees in order to try to avoid overfitting your model by making just one. And so the algorithm random forest will make multiple decision trees and it will kind of aggregate the results, you know, through voting or through averaging voting for classification and averaging with regression to try to give you a general idea of the performance of the model. That's kind of what's happening. Again, we don't deal with the detail of the mathematics in these videos. We focus instead on using Python. So what we're going to do in this video is we're going to be taking a look at a cancer data set and we're going to be trying to predict the age of people based on the independent variables that are that are available in the data set. So you can see right here in this first cell, these are the various packages or modules that we're going to be using pandas, numpy, pi data set like normal. And then for lines four or five and six, those are our, our main stars. Line four is going to be dealing with our splitting our data. Lines five and six is going to be dealing with our random forest regressor. And of course, line six is dealing with our evaluation, which we will be using mean squared error. So we're going to go ahead and run this. And of course, now we're going to prepare our data. It's pretty, pretty straightforward in this particular context. So we're just going to load our data set called cancer from the pi data set module and take a quick look at it. So these are the different variables that we have. Uh, you can look up the details by adding the show docs argument to the data function. And so we got status, whether they're alive or dead, I believe, their age, the gender of the person or the sex. Uh, this is like the amount of calories they're, they're consuming, I believe. Oh, right over here. These are different metrics for like how healthy they are, I believe. And then like their weight loss. So if you look closely, you can already see that we have one small problem in that we have some NA values here. So we need to remove those in order for our, our algorithm to have success here. So we need to remove these NAs. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go down to the next cell and we're going to start removing the troubled NAs here. So I just type in drop NA. So this is a function that drop NA will drop the NAs, obviously. And we saved it to an object called DF. And when we run this, you can see now that the, those NAs that was in the first line are gone. And so we've cleaned this up a little bit. And so we do, we no longer have to worry about NAs. Now we need to separate our data set DF where we have the independent variables that we are going to use in one object and the dependent variables that we are going to use in a separate object. So the independent variables are going to be inside an object called X and the dependent variable is going to be in an object we call Y. So let's go ahead and put that in here. Now, Remember, we're trying to predict age. So that is why age is going to be alone here in our dependent variable. And of course, X is going to have multiple variables. And these are the, uh, the variables we're going to be using to predict age. That's what we're doing here. Now we can move to developing our model. There's not a whole lot to say here, except first we have to prepare our training test set. And that is done right here. We've done this in several videos. So we're going to have our train set a train test set of X and a train test set of Y. So these are all separated by very, uh, excuse me, commas. Then we have our function we're going to use right here, train underscore test underscore split. These are the variables we're going to be using right here, X and Y. Uh, test size or the test set is going to be 30% of the data. Uh, then we have the random state or the C set to zero. And then below that we set up our or um, what do you call this? We call we, we initiate our, our model here. And so we're going to have 100 estimators. That means we're going to make 100 little decision trees and random state set to one, I believe is also another type of um, seed number, if you will. That's what it is so that we can reproduce this. So I just press control enter. 
There we go. You can't see anything, but trust me, something's about to happen soon. So we're gonna to move to our next sale here. We're gonna move right here. And we're going to fit our model right here in the first line, line number one. In line number two, we do the prediction on the test set. And then finally, we calculate the mean squared error, which gives us some idea of the model's performance. But I need to um, put a little asterisk next to our results in that the mean squared error is only useful in comparison to other models. So it's a relative uh, metric rather than an absolute metric. So I press Control Enter. And you can see the output for the mean squared error is 71.75. And so the last thing we can do here just to better evaluate our model is we can get an idea of what are the most important variables for predicting age. And so there's a lot of visualization stuff here. Basically, you know, I don't want to spend the next 20 minutes explaining this, but we're looking at the importance of different features and we're making a horizontal bar graph here. That's what BR, B A R H means. Uh, so let's go ahead and run this and you can see right there. So the best way to predict someone's uh, age, if you will, is by how many calories they're consuming, you can see, and by the amount of weight loss, et cetera, which makes sense. As people get older, they generally eat fewer calories, uh, and also they tend to lose weight, <laughs> you know, and also, you know, how long have they been sick? That's another one, and so on and so forth. So this is just one way to get insights into uh, how somebody is doing in terms of their actual um, age when you use these different variables here that we had in this data set. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to review what we've done in this video and then finish it. So in this video, we took a look at random forest for regression. In other words, our dependent variable was continuous in nature. And so we were trying to figure out the age of somebody who was um, a, a cancer patient, either a survivor or maybe already gone. And so we started by looking at loading our data here. We removed the NAs as necessary using the dropped NA. From there, we um, uh, separate our independent and dependent variables from each other. Then we actually set up an, uh, our train and test set. We set up our model and then we evaluated it. So that was pretty much it for this video. So I want to thank you for watching. My name is Darren Thomas. I am the Director of Educational Research Techniques. Take care.